you welcome to Steve Head. How are you doing? I can see that. Some of you actually going, look at me, look at me. <laughs> I knew this. If you think, <laughs> what is the point? Life, really? Seriously, have I got to memorize three questions? Oh, God. Steve, one of the things you talk about in your book is the importance of sort of defining and understanding your purpose mm -hmm. and direction that you're going in. Yeah. How does someone start that journey? <laughs> it's not it's not easy because if you if you again running my training programs, right, you'll, you'll ask an audience, maybe a small group, large group, write down, you know, answer the question, what is my purpose? And most people would sit there with a blank sheet of paper going, well, I don't really know, right? You know, because it's, it's a big question. If I said, what's your goals and objectives for the next week and a half? You know, pay the bills, do this, do that. But what's the reason you're here? Right? That's a big question. The start point for it, though, is to, is to get people to think about um, what's important to them. Right? I think, so we, there's, a, there's a whole chunk around value. And I could feel it happening. And I was driving to the country and the Jeremy Vine show was on. And he had a guest on and it was a psychiatrist mental health stuff. I thought, this is going to be relevant. Turn the volume up. And, he, and this guy said, I'm going to be talking after the break about a, 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 an epidemic that's sweeping across the Western world. I thought, what's this? Is it diabetes? What is it? But it can't be a psychiatrist. What can it be? And he said, it's the curse of the strong. And I thought, wow. And then this fella, people ring in the radio show, the Jeremy Vine show, and this bloke rings in. Now, I wasn't writing this down, and it's a lot of years ago, six years ago, but I'll tell you the gist of what it made me think and feel, right? This guy rings up and he goes, Jeremy, I'm self-employed, run my own business, I'm very, very determined and driven. I thought, that's me, that's how I was brought up. I always work hard, always push myself to the limits. I want to be the best dad, the best brother, the best son, and the best businessman I can possibly be. I employ a few people. I travel thousands of miles a year, and I try to deliver the best I can for my family financially. I thought, that's exactly how I was wired. This is spot on, brilliant, right up my street. He says, three years ago, I'm driving down the motorway, in mid-40s, I was in my 40s at the time. He said, I pulled over in the hard shoulder, switched the engine off, couldn't drive. Three years, I've been out. And the consultant went, that's the curse of the strong. It's called stress-induced depression. People don't break because they're weak. They break because they're strong. Radio scaring the hell out of me. And then my wife rings me. And she goes, are you listening to Radio 2? And I said, I was. She says, that's you. I said, it's not me. That's him. But I, I'm fine. <laughs> this, this only happens to the people. It doesn't happen to me. That's what you always think, right? Anyway, so, so I drove up to Lancaster. The cheer teachers up against their will, right? Which is what motivational speakers do, basically. We get you in a room and say, I don't care how you feel, I'm going to cheer against you well. So I did my job. I'm driving down the M6 on a Friday, 16th of November is my birthday. Miserable weather, dark night, raining, M6. Anybody ever drive on the M6 ever? Can I give you a tip? Don't. Especially through Nutsford. I so walked to the front door that night. My wife greeted me with two glasses of champagne. She said, honey, happy birthday. I went, oh, when I say champagne, slash carver. If you, if you can't see the bottle, you know what I mean? So I got me champagne, I sat down, and she said, I've got a present for you. And she handed me this gift, right? This is the actual gift she gave me. She said, uh, that's for you. And it was wrapped, it was wrapped. And I said to her, shall I open it now? She says, yeah, now. And I opened the wrapping off this book, this, this, which was obviously a book. I thought it was a book on golf. I like a cheeky game of golf. This'll cheer me up. Turns out the book my wife had bought was from the thing from the show six months before on the radio. And um, it's called Depressive Illness, The Curse of the Strong, right? <laughs> now. I'm not, you know, I, I'm serious about mental health, but I'm not a birthday read. Um, <laughs> I, I gave it, so I looked at her and says, what's this for? She's like, that, that was off the show, that Jeremy Vine thing. I've been worried sick. I bought it for you and I've saved it for your birthday. I could have had a bloody breakdown in the meantime. Six months has gone by. She says, you know, she saved, that's the, you don't buy that for me. I'm the one that cheers people up against the will. You shouldn't be giving me this. She goes. I actually drew, um, in my head, I'm, a quite, I'm quite a visual person, and I, um, I created a, a, an image, right? So this is, it's not in the book, this is what I made up. So I read the book through, it's quite scary, and, and I read this thing and it says, and I thought to myself, imagine a glass coffee table, and when you're one year old, somebody puts a pound weight, that's in old measures, right? For the young ones, that's half a kilogram. Uh, you put a pound weight on the, on the table, and when you're two, you put a second one on, third one on, fourth one on, and every birthday you just celebrate for, for put a commemorative pound weight. Then you get to 55, as I am now, you get to your 56th birthday, you've got this tower of weights you've collected over the years, you place the 56th weight, the, the table cracks, the weights plummet to the ground. That must have been a, a weak table. No wrong with the table, never supposed to put 56 pound on it. And people say, I break because I'm weak. No, you didn't break because you're weak. You broke because you were strong. You just didn't realize when the cracks started to appear. 
pay attention. Now, here's another thing that's a bit scary. Let me read this. And I also spoke here in 2010. But how many people have seen me before? Can I just check where you are? Actually, that's not very many. Wow, that's very tiny, tiny man. How many people have never seen me before in your lives before today? This bit I'm going to do now is for you. The rest of you, the, the handful of you, you can just do it like. Slide. The thing you're going to do here, all I want you to do is, will you do me a favor when I see the slide, and, and if you're at the back, you will have to shout, shout out some feedback for me on the slide you're about to see. Will you do that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, seriously, I'm looking at your faces, and this is what I've just seen. I don't think so, Steve. <laughs> don't you think we've done enough interaction today? <laughs> yes, I'll give you feedback. Here's a question for you. Here's one for you, right? You like this. How many people in this room talk to themselves by a show of hands? Right. Now, whenever you ask that question, you always get the same response. 90% of the hands go up and 10% sitting there going, do I talk to myself? <laughs> or you like this. I was in London doing a conference for NHS finance directors. Imagine you lot, but you're all finance directors for the NHS. And I showed this slide and I waited for some feedback. So we said, good enough. And any meeting, because I guarantee people in your company, some of them, not you, you're fine. But some of them are mood hoovers. And they walk in a room. You know, like you've been away today, learning, learning, building your learning and knowledge up. And you're going to go back to work tomorrow. And you're going to walk through the door of your office or wherever you go. And you're going to go, Mock, you'll have a spin in your step. Because you haven't been under the daily stresses. You've had a bit of a day away. You've had free food. Right? And you're going to go home, go back to work tomorrow. And you're going to go, morning. And they're going to go, is it? answered to me in a team of 12 everybody's fish is different you got to know what the fish is when you know what the fish is you you, you get something more out of your team that's the personal empathy stuff I think Karen was related to before that personal stuff you know something about the fish